Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll dive into the DPS build of Hulgren, which is the new hero class coming in C, Global, and EU servers this May. Hulgren's primary damaging skill is Focus Mode, which is a channeling AoE skill that deals physical damage every 0.6 seconds to nearby enemies for up to 7 times. We already discussed in detail the skills of Hulgren in one of my previous videos. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll have the video link below. This time, we'll talk about which stats, runes, gears, cards, and upgrades are needed to prepare your character in advance. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. To unlock the new Hulgren Hero class, you need to reach a Tier 3 Mechanic Job class and use a Job Change Voucher in the Hero class interface. His max job level is 83 and his skills can be improved using runes. First, for Attribute Point Distribution, max out Strength for increasing melee physical attack. Then, just distribute the other points on Luck and Dex for a slight boost in physical attack and bit for survivability. As for damage modifiers, these are the ones that can further boost your damage. As a general rule for clearing the current late game instances, you will need around 200% ignore death, 80% pen, 50% skill damage, and 50% elemental damage. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, activating the essential nodes will grant additional 20% fire damage, 18% physical attack, 15% physical damage, and 15% ignore death. For advanced runes, it is not necessary to max his core passive skill to level 7, as it only boosts refined attack, a stat that isn't too impactful in PvE. The most important rune for Hulkran is the Hammer of Destruction Star Rune with high first line value as it increases his final damage by up to 4% for every additional weapon refinement level caused by his core passive. Another important rune is S rune for Fiery Furnace, which boosts his physical penetration by up to 10% when using fire element attacks. As for the other runes, you don't need to aim for a high first line value. Just have their second line activated to increase the chance of triggering his core passive. And then for attribute runes, prioritize leveling up the following for improving damage. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. Since the new tiers and shadow equipment update will be coming with the Alberta update, I'll be including my recommendations for both ancient and synthesized equipment. First for a weapon, a high refined fire axe is the best in slot for boosting overall damage output. The only drawback is that it's not versatile, especially when facing monsters of fire and water element. Your weapon should be enchanted with Morale 4 or Sharp Blade 4 with high PDI and inlaid with Drake Star card and or Minora Star card to trigger the inside effect. For offhand, get a Dragon Bone Shield with 18% physical damage as main equipment. And then for shadow equipment, you may either use a Rasa Chain if lacking Ignore Death or Skeleton Bracer if you already reach 200% Ignore Death. Both offhand gears should be enchanted with Armor Breaking 4 or High PDI and inlaid with Alice Star card or Late King's Chest Knight's card. For May Armor, you may either use a Voodoo Armor if lacking Ignore Death or a Dragon Scale Armor if you already reach 200% Ignore Death. While for Shadow Armor, you may either use a Shine Holes Robe for boosting raw physical attack or Greed Shirt for boosting percent attack and percent physical damage. Both armors should be enchanted with Morale 4 or High PDI and inlaid with Poitata Star card. Before we continue on, I'd like to give special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Smalwen. With years of experience in the industry and partnerships with various game developers, they offer top-ups for a wide range of games at competitive prices, including Premium and BCC for Ragnarok Mobile. Smalwen Top-Up is available in many countries across all servers and you may pay via their trusted payment platform. In the Philippines, I can pay securely using my GCash via Alipay and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smalwan's pricing and payment methods using my exclusive link in the description box below. For Garment, the best in slot is Brave Warrior's Pauldron with 12% skill damage as main equipment and White Duke's Manteau as shadow equipment. Both garments should be enchanted with High PDI and inlaid with Zanubia card. For foot gear, you may either use a Dragon Slayer War Boots with 6% pen or Overlord War Boots with 6% physical damage as main equipment. 
while for shadow equipment you may choose between Little Fairy slippers or St. Mary's cloth shoes. Both foot gear should be enchanted with high PDI and inlaid with Edgar Star card to prevent getting rooted or staggered. For accessories, the best in slot would be Essence of Scorching Flame as main equipment and Flame Feather as shadow equipment for boosting fire damage. All accessories should be enchanted with Sharp Blade 4 and High PDI and inlaid with Marine Sphere card plus any of the following cards depending on your target. For headwear, these are my top picks for each slot. For head, use a High Refined Saint token or Holy Knight Blessing inlaid with either a Machine Dragon Wing card or a Tumbla card. For face, Winter Crown or Plus 10 Silent Sinking would be my top choice. For mouth, any of these gosh items would be good for boosting damage. For back, you may use a Wrath Greasy Fallen Feather for a chance of doubling your damage or Fate Wheel to reduce the cooldown of skills and try to get Morale Fourth Enchant. And for tail, get a beautiful ensemble or a high refined summer banana boat with sharp blade fourth enchant. And lastly, make sure to equip a card to boost luck, death, and m death. Up next, here are the other upgrades that you can invest in to further boost your damage. For guild buffs, maxing out your blessings and prayers will grant additional raw physical attack, pen, ignore death, and fire damage. For oracle mirror extract, the options are combustible knife for penetration. Bilgusarin for damage to MVP, Claw for percent attack, or Chieftain's Axe for ignore death. For Ancient Relics, there are several possible options, so just choose depending on your playstyle and budget. Valkyrie's Protection or Waste Time for FTP players, Lord of Vain if you just want an overall increase in damage, or Horn of the Unyielding to prevent being one hit killed by burst damage. For multi-job, you can unlock the following classes to get more stats. And for Adventure Handbook, just focus on collecting items and achievements that grant attack when unlocked or deposited. Finally, let's take a look at some tips for using Hawk Ran in boss hunting and clearing instances. First, place these two buffs in Prepare for Elite. Fiery Furnace for boosting fire damage and pen, and Extreme Exercise for boosting final damage and final damage reduction. As for the manual skill bar, I opt to put Focus Mode, Blazing Anvil, Prepare for Elite, Magnum Break, Lucky Refining, and Craftsman's Heart. It's better to manually cast skills for better timing. Don't forget to use the following consumables which can help boost your damage output. For survivability, you'll need a lot of Igrisol Berries due to Holgrand's low sustain. You can also use the new Spike Alloy to prevent dying. Then make sure to have at least 300 million zenny in your account to maximize the damage increase to monsters granted by your blacksmith fortune passive skill. Before attacking, you would want to trigger his core passive first by continuously smashing the ground with focus mode. This is because his final damage increases for every additional weapon and accessory refinement level. After reaching plus 18 and above refinement, cast Repair for Elite and Magnum Break for boosting attack. If you are in a team, you may also cast Lucky Refining to boost your teammates' armor and headgear refinement and reductions. Then you can start attacking by alternating Focus Mode and Blazing Anvil. If you need to escape while Focus Mode is channeling, you can easily cancel it by riding your mount. When facing monsters that deal huge physical damage or can destroy or strip your equipment, cast Craftsman's Heart to protect yourself and one teammate. Make sure to recast your buffs every 30 seconds to maintain your damage.
So that's it for my Hulgrahan DPS build guide for PvE. Overall, Hulgrahan can easily out DPS many classes in PvP when built properly. However, I don't think he will be able to outperform the meta classes due to his low damage frequency and low sustain. But even with these drawbacks, it's evident that Hulgrahan has good potential in PvE. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.